I am so glad you convinced me that the family car should be the Defender 110. It is so beautiful inside. It's so comfortable, and it just feels indestructible. Yes, it really is. I've been waiting a long time for the new model to come out. The Defender 110, I'm telling you, it's my favorite car of all times. It's my third one. You know, I have stories of going off-road. The guy managed the group. He was like, what are you doing in this beautiful car? I'm like, I'm going off-road. He's like, are you sure? Because you can use one of ours, and then they look like Mad Max cars. I'm like, no, 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 no. we're going to do this. And he was shocked. Wow. Well, it's great because the Defender has been reimagined for 21st century adventure and its unparalleled off-road ability, as well as its robust interior, are invaluable whether you're headed towards uncharted territory or just a weekend of exploration. The Defender 110 tackles challenging surroundings with absolute confidence. The SUV conveys strength outside and in, featuring peerless technology like an intuitive driver display and an award-winning infotainment system. That's my favorite part, to keep you connected no matter where the journey takes you. Adventure is unique to everyone, and so is the Defender. Choose from the two-door Defender 90, the four-door Defender 110, or the larger Defender 130 with the ability to seat up to eight passengers. You'll find uncompromising performance in all three. So pack up and go even further with the Defender 110. Learn more at LandRoverUSA.com forward slash Defender. These days, we're all investors, trying to be smart with our money despite our worst impulses. But at iShares, we believe that deep down inside of every investor is a better investor. One that's just waiting to be let out. Explore iShares ETFs and insights and let your best investor out. Visit iShares.com for more information. I've done over 1,500 podcasts over, it's been, I guess, gosh, 10 years now. And what's great about podcasting is you get to just call up all these people you're either amazed by or maybe they're, they did something currently that you really want to ask more questions about or they're your heroes from childhood or some icon of your personal history. That And you just get this chance to call them and say, hey, can I talk to you and ask you any question I want? Like, for instance, you know, a few weeks ago, David Rubenstein, the head of the Carlisle Group, came on and I was able to just ask every question I had about the economy and he was able to answer as you know i've been so fascinated by chess and even back in the 80s gary kasparov was my hero and i was able he's been on my podcast four or five times like what a gift it is to me and i hope it is a gift to the listeners to listen in while i ask these questions to my heroes so a few years ago I had on right before COVID actually, it was in my apartment. We did this podcast and there was a kind of a big crowd and, and, and we set up chairs and people were really listening. Suzanne Summers, first off, she was really famous as being an, an actress from a famous actress from my childhood on a show called three's company. Since then, she's been so involved in the health industry and the exercise industry. Tragically, you know, she passed away. As I'm recording this, she passed away yesterday and she had a long battle, 23 years with breast cancer. She was 76 years old. And I remember thinking during the podcast, boy, this is a woman who lives life to the fullest. She's had her ups, she's had her downs, but she, every day, it felt like she squeezed the most out of life. Like, you know, she's in her 70s, her husband's in the 80s, she pointed him out and she was talking about how like they have sex twice a day or whatever. Like, I hope I am so fortunate at the age of 76 to be doing that. And with all the, again, all the ups and downs, particularly as you, as you age. And anyway, it was a meaningful podcast to me, meaningful in the sense that I still four years later or three years later, remember it and apply the things I learned from that podcast in my life. I don't always do that, but in this case with Suzanne Summers, I did. And again, she was such an icon from my childhood. It was such a pleasure to talk to her. 
she and my wife got along. She stuck around afterwards, and we were all just joking around. And it was a funny podcast as well. A lot of a lot of reaction from the audience. But it's evergreen, meaning it's just as good now as the day we recorded it. And if you didn't listen to it before, or even if you listened to it before, it's worth listening to again. Here it is. And again, rest in peace, Suzanne Summers. This isn't your average business podcast, and he's not your average host. This is the James Altucher Show. Maybe they influence each other. He's very, very... I really like your hair. Oh, uh, thank you. I really like yours. Thank you. I've, I've liked yours since Three's Company. <laughs> That's funny. So I've got Suzanne Summers here from... I knew you originally, of course, from Three's Company. And mm-hmm. then since then, you've done many more, much more important things, including... 20, I didn't know you were the author of 27 books. Yeah. So you've written more books than me. So you're the first person <laughs> I met who's done that. And also, I'm older than you are. <laughs> okay, I'm going to catch up. Uh, but maybe I'll catch up or maybe not because your latest book, which we're going to talk about now, is called A New Way to Age, uh, The Most Cutting Edge Advances in Anti-Aging. And people will probably say, well, why did Suzanne Summers wrote that? And I'll answer, and then you can answer, which is you've written a ton of books on health and medicine and holistic medicine and so on. Uh, and in this book, you interview, I don't know how many doctors, but like, was it 20 doctors, a dozen doctors? You've interviewed Probably. a whole bunch of doctors. Didn't, actually didn't count, but a lot. I didn't count either. Yeah. I should have counted. Yeah. <laughs> and But they were all fascinating. And yeah. you're really, you know, uh, and by the way, also I have uh, Dr. Dr. Mitchell. Gene Mitchell here. <laughs> People, listeners might remember him from the Dr. Gundry Plant Paradox podcast, but Dean, welcome back. Thanks. I want to be your wingman today because, uh, <laughs> you know, it's a lot of fun being here with you. And of course, <laughs> Suzanne Summers, who I have a lot of admiration for. Thank well, you yeah, so and much. He was, he was telling me, Suzanne, how much he liked your book, uh, Toxic and mm-hmm. and Knockout. And, and so many of your, your books have been so interesting. And you're a real, your, your, your interview style with the doctors you interview, you're really trying to, you're really getting the maximum amount of knowledge from them. And it was so fascinating. You talk about everything from... I don't know, oxytocin to telomeres to <laughs> CBD to vitamin B. Uh, and, you know, and then one, I just want to quote one you, thing. you, your dog-eared and everything. Yeah, no, this is, <laughs> I learned a lot so, and I had a lot of questions. But the main thing is, uh, um, I think the subtitle of your book should have been, and it's from page, I, I believe it was 192. I don't have it written down. But I, this quote, I think your subtitle should have been, Infrared sauna makes for better erections. I think that should have been the subtitle <laughs> of the book. And we'll, we'll maybe get to that. Maybe not. We'll see. That's another book. <laughs> right. That's the next book. But, uh, but, but there's a lot of stuff. It's, you're you're all funny. over here from stem cell therapy to testosterone to supplements. Uh, so I almost don't know where to begin because there's so much knowledge. What do, what do you do? What do you think is, out of all the people you spoke to, what do you think is the most important ingredients for anti-aging. And by the way, Dr. Mitchell's here to help me just in case I'm an idiot, which I am. I don't know anything. (laughs) So I'll ask the questions I'm curious about, and then he'll fill in some facts for me and and for you and for the listeners. So roll back. What was the question? (laughs) What do you do for anti-aging? You're you're obsessed with it. You you, you do it. You you ask these doctors because you're interested and, and aging is you, it seems like you, you think, and, and, and I would agree that aging almost should be thought of as a, a disease rather than a natural thing that happens in our lives. And it's a, it's a disease that should be studied or a condition that should be studied and potentially cured. And so that's the focus of your interviews. It seems in a way it is curable. When you look at the present paradigm of aging, it's something none of us want. It's decrepit. It's frail. It's one of the big three, Alzheimer's, heart disease, cancer, and then the eventual end point at the nursing home. And uh, nobody ever thinks that will happen to them. Nobody in a nursing home ever thought they'd end up in a nursing home. What are any of us doing differently than those, than those people? So you have to start thinking about it now, and the earlier the better, to make better choices because... The people in nursing homes today just thought they were doing everything right. They believed that processed food was okay. They believed the allopathic approach to health was okay. And I know that most people are most comfortable with allopathic medicine. What do you mean by allopathic? Allopathic is, um, doctor, here's my problem. And the doctor says, here's the drug for the problem. 
Uh, and that's what feels safe. And that's what we all grew up on. And then we went to the doctor and they wrote a prescription and you almost didn't feel like you got your money's worth if you didn't walk out with a prescription. And so that I get, and I'm not trying to tell people not to go that way, but if you're like me and you'd rather go natural first and then only resort to Western medicine as a, if absolutely necessary, then this is the book for you. So the way I approach my health and the greatest thing that ever happened to me was getting cancer 20 years ago. It's an unusual it, thing to say that that's the greatest thing. It is an unusual you. thing, but, and it wasn't at the moment when you hear those three words, but I remember being presented with standard of care. And I remember saying, I can't. The idea of, of, of filling my body with chemical poisoning to cure me, I don't get it. And, and I said, will it cure me? Well, it won't cure you, but it might give you a better chance. Is that, I'd hate to sell that product. You know, here's 18 weeks of chemo, you'll lose your hair and you have a better chance of, of living, but not, it's not a cure. Yeah, like, well, I'm always curious. And I, I actually asked this question of my friends. If you have cancer, would you do the chemo? Because it's, it's not so clear what the chances of success are. In many cases, I've seen people die from the chemo. And a lot of, a lot of cases. Yeah. And, and it doesn't look very pleasant way to die either. It's, it's very, torturous. Yeah. yeah. And so I don't know. I mean, well, I know what you did. So tell me your story. I've turned it down several times. I've had a lot of cancer and I beat it every time um, doing it my way through diet, through detoxification, through pancreatic enzymes. I had cancer three times in my 20s. Uh, people don't know this, actually. Yeah, I don't know that. Actually, yeah. what, what, what did you, what uh, kind uh, of cancer Severe you? Uh, hyperplasia in my uterus three times in my 20s. In my 30s, I had malign malignant mal melanoma on my back. In my 40s, I had uh, cancer in my uterus and had it removed. In my 50s, I had um, breast cancer, a tumor. In my 60s, I had uh, ductal carcinoma in situ. So cancer just likes you. <laughs> Yeah. Like it's all over. But I'm not afraid of it. I'm going to interrupt one thing. That she's a warrior. I mean, when you when you <laughs> battle all these things, that's what I tell my patients. Like sometimes when they're like, oh my God, this happened to me. I had this cancer, this or two. And they battled through it and they've actually overcome it. I said to them, you're a warrior. You deserve that medal. So don't <laughs> don't feel like you're, you know, defective in some ways. Well, I actually am, 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 this is selfish to say, but I'm nervous that I haven't had anything because <laughs> I think the one time I get something... I'm just going to completely collapse and that's it. That's going to be my final. Yeah, but final. you have great hair. Yeah, well, at least I have that. So in the grave, I'll have an open casket. God's very <laughs> sneaky. He never gets you what you think's going to get you. It's always something else. I think in the... I, Good hair cancer. I mean, this this book, to limit it to cancer, is would be doing it a disservice, mm. but we're in that arena. But I think the oncologists are are doing their best. They're giving us our, their best. But that's what they're taught. And I am in a place in my life of, uh, can we be more creative? Maybe it's not that complex. Maybe, maybe cancer um, wants to be fed right and detoxed. Uh, a, a guy that I interviewed for three of my books, you may know him, Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez. Yes, yes. Who I believe was murdered uh, four oh. years ago. He was just about to, to publish a um, 126 uh, case studies of stage four cancer, including pancreatic, pancreatic of his patients who had been alive on his protocol 10 years or longer. I used his protocol for my, uh, for ductal carcinoma in situ. What is it? It's coffee enemas and pancreatic enzymes. Oh, we were just talking yeah. about and it. This is from Nick Gonzalez. I knew, I knew his yeah, work. Yeah. Yeah, I knew, and I had patients that we shared you know, that swore by what he did. It was difficult, you know, um, but people who but had... I think chemotherapy is harder. Yeah, yes. Yeah, and, what, what, ways, what's a coffee enema? Okay, so, you... so let's start with why pancreatic enzymes. Uh, the pancreatic enzymes that he um, uh, gives you are for porcine. Pig's uh, enzymes are closest to human. So when you take enzymes with meals, it just di digests your food, but you take it away from meals an hour before and after. Like in a supplement form? Yeah, in supplements. And a, a good deal. If you have cancer, probably uh, 14 to 16 every five hours. And so it's a commitment. You got to believe it. Can you but, buy those in the store or what's... Yeah, you, 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 yeah, you buy them okay. from his pharmacy where he never took a piece. <laughs> I said, he said, I don't want to make money off my patients. I said, it's okay. Anyway, 
uh, enzymes eat debris. Cancer is debris. Chemicals are debris. Toxins are debris. So the enzymes go in there and eat up the debris. Uh, hopefully it's eating your cancer. And then for lack of a more delicate way to describe it, those little, they're little animals, the, um, the enzymes, they, um, they poop out the debris, okay, into your bloodstream. And then the coffee enema uh, detoxes the liver and flushes it out. So you're eating it up and flushing it out and eating it up and flushing it out. How, how does it know, how, how does it recognize that the cancer cells are debris? Because this isn't part of the idea is that cancer cells fool a lot of other medicines, you know, so that the medicines can't recognize this, the perhaps, bad from the good? Perhaps they're smarter, but um, if there's no food that they're digesting, they just take what's available. You know, they just, they just want what, what, whatever, whatever is available. And so um, when I went to Dr. Gonzalez's funeral and I talked to him three hours before he died mm -hmm. and he was fine. He's a God loving man, country loving man, doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, eats organic food. Um, he had recently had a checkup. He's perfect health. He, you know, he took perfect health. How did he took care of uh, his heart exploded. Yeah, they said he had a heart attack, I thought, right? So when I was at the funeral, the wife said to me, the widow, that he had gotten a phone call two months earlier from an anonymous caller saying, you're going to be murdered. You won't know where it's coming from. And it's going to look like a heart attack. And then she also said to me that Nick should talk to Nick, uh, to Mike Baker. So the widow said to me, do you know Mike Baker? And I said, I don't know him, but I know who he is. He used to be with the CIA and now he runs a, a, a security system called uh, Diligence Inc. So I called Mike Baker and I said, do you know Dr. Nick Gonzalez? No. Do you know you're mentioned in this anonymous call? No. I said, so you're with the CIA. Does the CIA have a way to induce a heart attack in somebody? And he paused, he goes, yeah, we have a heart attack gun. Uh, if I walk down the street and I just bang into you, he said, you won't see it, you won't feel it, but five hours later, your heart will explode. So, so obviously I wanna get to the material on the boat, but I yeah. also wanna hear why would the CIA be interested in this guy? Not the CIA, someone who got a hold of the technology mm. that the CIA uses, because what, what, what would the CIA care for? You can't have a little guy in New York Coming up with a cure to cancer, which is a $200 billion a year business. Connect mm. the dots. So when I went to his funeral, and it was upstate New York, one of those little churches that looked like George Washington went to church there. You know what they look like. It was packed with his patients. Mm. There wasn't one person there who looked ill. Not one gaunt face. Not one, you know, the mm. eye sunk. Not one gray complexion. Not one cane. Not one wheelchair. Everybody had vitality and juice. I always talk about energy and vitality as juice. Um, and then the reception after were all the stories of 26 years ago, I was told to get my things in order and I've been doing Gonzalez all these years. He never said I have a cure, but all his patients that I interviewed for my book said, you know, they were cured. So, so, so can I ask, like, let's say it was a different kind of cancer, like lung cancer. Doesn't or matter. So the same enzymes, Doesn't matter. the yeah. pancreatic Doesn't enzymes? Matter. Doesn't matter if it's a whole body, one organ, breast, prostate, doesn't matter. Oh my gosh, I love these clothes. Mizzen and Maine, that's M-I-Z-Z-E-N and Maine. It really is the most comfortable work clothes. Travel clothes, I'm try I I had to travel this whole week. I'm traveling for a week and a half. And I just took Mizzen and Maine clothes with me. Close out 2023 in style with comfortable, breathable, packable, and machine washable pieces from Mizzen and Maine. As you wrap up your year-end goals, enjoy a Mizzen and Maine dress shirt that you can wear confidently. I like that they've got very, very just nice, solid colors. I don't really like to get all fancy in patterns and everything, although they do have some pattern shirts but very comfortable clothes, stretchable pants. It's just super comfortable, but they look professional and they, you can wear them casually or professionally. I like some of their flannel shirts are untucked shirts. I love untuck. I never tuck in. So again, uh, whether you're shopping for a special someone or giving yourself the gift you really want, I just buy myself gifts. Mizzen and Maine is the perfect gift for any guy who works, travels, and or cares about looking and feeling great. As you could tell, 
by my many photos across the internet. I care about looking fantastic. I'm practically a model. And let's be honest, every guy loves to look great. So again, shop now at mizzenandmain.com and save 20% when you spend $130 or more using promo code James. That's promo code James at Mizzen and Main, M-I-Z-Z-E-N and Main dot com. You know what I love about fantasy sports is that even though I'm not going to be a great basketball player or a baseball player or a football player or whatever, I feel like I get to participate and make decisions and use my knowledge of these different leagues to, or these different sports to, to compete. So it's like I can pick my team or I can pick my favorite players and I could use my knowledge to make predictions and maybe even make money. So with the basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the specials league on prize picks. This is a league created specifically for combo projections that include two or more players from different sports or leagues. Want to play alongside some of prize picks, favorite players like rapper Meek Mill and comedian Andrew Schultz, who's also been a guest on this podcast and I've been a guest on his. You can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries for some of the biggest names in the prize picks community each week. Look, prize picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play. Even if one of your players gets injured for football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. What? So, I love playing it. I love anywhere where I can use analytical ability with my interests to demonstrate some skill and maybe make some money. And I like the game like aspect. I do wish they had chess as a category on prizepicks.com, but I'll set up for what they've got. Maybe I should make my own fantasy chess league. But in any case, I love prize picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash James. Use code James for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. That's the easiest hundred dollars you're ever going to make. So that's prizepicks.com slash James and use code James daily fantasy sports made easy. How come like someone like Steve Jobs, and I'm not being skeptical. Yeah. I'm just curious because yeah. obviously now this is going to be the thing I do. It's the, you're the last person I speak to about it. And that's the <laughs> thing I do. So, so how come Steve Jobs or somebody like that who did try holistic approaches, he ended up going back to, you know, the whole didn't believe, snapper thing. Didn't believe. Maybe it wasn't the right approach. Mm-hmm. Belief is a huge thing. Belief is powerful. Mm-hmm. And all these people at Nick Gonzalez's funeral had a total belief in him. I have a total belief in him. So I'm more apt to be able to uh, tackle cancer in me than someone who doesn't believe. I think belief is that powerful. So the book is not about cancer, but it's, but it's about other ways. Because I know most people are most comfortable going allopathic. Like I said, you know, here's the, here's the, the problem, doctor. Here's the drug for the problem. I prefer first to try natural any way I can. And then if absolutely necessary, I go allopathic or Western. And I've been using, so when I had cancer, that that's, I just didn't want it. When, when I was presented with it, I have to say that took some courage because I had to watch um, Dan Rather on CBS say she risking her life. I was on the cover of People magazine. Is she risking her life? Uh, Larry King with Andrew Weil. Is she risking her life? And I'm hearing from everybody. Everybody's looking at me with that. What are you crazy? What are you doing? Is it any crazier to um, change the way you eat and eat, um, take food seriously? Food is fuel. Uh, imagine this is a Maserati putting the most uh, uh, powerful food in this great machine that we have. So I ate only, and I do eat only organic food. If you can pick it, pluck it, milk it, or shoot it, you can eat it. And if it's organic, um, food, uh, thoughts, sleep, 
I know it sounds too simple, but maybe that's what I said a little while ago. Maybe they're making it more complicated than than it is. No, I, I mean, and we were just talking about this too, that just, I, we were talking about, I've had over 500 episodes of this podcast. Many of them have been with health practitioners. And the one, everybody could argue about every single diet. Right. But the one or two things they agree on is low sugar, low processed yep. food, good sleep, mm-hmm. and some exercise. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But James, you know what I really... Suzanne's been a little bit too humble in this situation because I've been in practice 30 years. And I remember even as a young doctor 25 years ago too, when she was coming out with her books and doing her things. And today, a lot of these things are commonplace now. And people, I mean, so many of my patients, they're so interested in eating healthy. You know, the things that she brought out 25, 30 years ago were bold. And especially to come out from a non-medical professional, even more bold. And I think what she was sort of even tying into, and you're up against the pharmaceutical industry. They would much more prefer to have a, a drug where you have to pay $1,000 a month to get injected than to eat more natural foods or do certain things. So, you know, I think what she did, and she's being a little bit humble about it, it was tremendous. And especially Mm, in the time when she did it. And Mm. now I think she deserves the credit of being, you know, like a a senior, as we would call (laughs) a senior holistic professional. I don't think she wants to be called senior. (laughs) Not senior. But but we know senior in in authority. In authority. It didn't help that I was playing the dumbest woman in America. That was the hard part. Right. That's right. It was such a transition to make. (laughs) Right. I mean, if you were a medical reporter, that's right. But you were a sex symbol. You were a TV star. But at, at the same time, also, you used it appropriately because, you know, again, you got that attention. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I think you did it all these years. And I've read your work with, with a certain kind of reverence to realizing, you know, you have a big responsibility. You can't give people false hope and you can't do things that would undermine their relationship with their doctor, which is sometimes all these people have. Or the doctors that I interview. Yes. I, well, I, well, I think take them very seriously. I, th- I think that's key is that um, you sort of balance you know, your background with the fact that you're bringing in the authority of all these doctors yeah. who you've worked with and you're, you're interviewing them, asking them great questions. So they're kind of downloading this information to you. You Then you're writing about it in this book and you talk to so many amazing people. It's clear they're knowledgeable in every aspect. So now what do you do for aging? Like now you're keeping your health, you're keeping your juice. You're yeah, very energetic. <laughs> and, you know, you talk about everything from, you know, DHEA supplements to telomere lengthening and, right. and all these things. What what do you do? Well, you know, this year I turned 73 and I thought, no, what's interesting about 73 is I always thought when I was 73, I'd be old. And chronologically, I'm old, but I'm not old. You're sitting here with me. I'm not old. I'm not an old lady. And so what's the difference? I, I have embraced my age. I, I'm not all pilled up so that I have my acquired wisdom, so I can perform my, I'm, I'm a matriarch, and that sounds like some old-fashioned thing, but wisdom is the one thing that no young person can buy or have. And um, what I'm, I just was interviewed by two young women, they're in their 30s, and I said, you're the hope, because you're not stuck in a, in a thought process, because they were both going, I'd rather go natural. I go, so, so take, Take that and don't go to the doctor like a child. Go to the doctor informed. You're the contractor. And doctors are professionals that we hire to take care of different parts of our body. But you can't hire the right um, subcontractors if you don't know your job and your job is the contractor. You have to listen to the language of the body. Like when you are in hormonal decline, it's such a language. It took me three years to hear it because I nobody ever mentioned menopause to me, and it was a secret. And when I was a kid, you used to say in whispered voices, my mother's going through the change, I hear. <laughs> Remember the change? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was so shameful, that our, this natural thing that happened. It's very clear to me that we're here for one reason only, and that's perpetuation of the species. And so everything's working great. Everything's great while we're completely reproductive. So around 40, 45, earlier now because of stress and toxicity, uh, which blunts hormone production, the brain goes, whoa, this person's got lousy eggs. This person's got imbalanced hormones. This person can't make another baby. I got to get rid of this person. I'm giving my brain a personality. Well, I got to get rid of- That was a good impersonation of the brain. (laughs) (laughs) I got to get rid of this person. Well, if you notice, 
we get our cancers at the end of our reproductive years. That's when I got mine because the, the brain wants me out of here, make room for the new young reproductive ones because it's perpetuation of the species. So now we got this dilemma because we have figured out how to extend life. We're living longer. We're going to live to 80, 90, and 100 now. I, I fully plan to live into my hundreds, um, but with no quality of life. And so what I started writing about, and I appreciate uh, your compliments. I started writing about quality of life. If I'm going to be alive, I want to be alive while I'm alive. What's alive? I want to have a sex drive. I want to have nice shiny hair. I don't want to have unexplained weight gain. I don't want to have uh, insomnia. I don't want to have night sweats. I don't want to have hot flashes. I don't want to be forgetful. And so how do I rectify all of that? Lab work, Urine testing is the best, much better than saliva or blood testing to be accurate with uh, determining your hormone levels. Right, and, to, and to be clear, you list exactly All of it. What, what blood work, what urine testing and so on, what to check for and everything in the, in the in back there. of your book. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that you're not going to read this book and go, well, I'd like it, but I don't know where to get it. You, the book will tell you everything. The back of the book is as important as any other part of the book in this. And so you, you um, are able to test to determine your deficiencies and then when that number comes back, you have a qualified doctor like Dr. Mitchell and, and other doctors that are in this book who understand you need uh, some of this and you need some of that. We women drain out of progesterone as a general rule first. Who cares? Well, estrogen is carcinogenic. Progesterone is anti-carcinogenic. So nature devised us so that we make estrogen every day of the month. And then 15 days of the month, we make progesterone. So just when our estrogen reaches a peak, which happens to coincide with the full moon, by the way. On the 12th day of every month, we women make the most estrogen we're going to make all month. What's interesting about that in paleo times, when there was no light, we could make love by the light of the moon. And guess what? On the 12th day, the light of the moon, we are horniest mm -hmm. and most mm -hmm. fertile. And this is perpetuation of the species. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, um, the estrogen drops and the progesterone comes in and nature had it all figured out. Okay, you're horny as hell today. We're going to make a baby. If you did or didn't, that's good. But today the progesterone comes in and saves the day. So now you're gonna, not going to get cancer. And we'll start this whole thing over again for next month. And that's how, that's how it worked. And so that's how I take my hormones. I take my hormones in a cycle, my estrogen. First three days, the lowest amount. The next three days, the, uh, it, it rises in increments. And by the 12th day, I make the most estrogen, because uh, I'm rubbing it in, that I make all month. And I'm very horny on the 12th day. Don't come around on the full moon. You can think of me every time oh, there's a full moon. You sound good morning America, right? Yeah. That you have sex twice a day. So congratulations. <laughs> Alan, congratulations over there. So, <laughs> so when you see a full moon, you can say, Suzanne's really horny tonight. <laughs> and then tomorrow, the uh, the progesterone comes in. But isn't I'm it nice to- i never look at a full moon to, the same way again. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Isn't it nice to understand this, that we are, we cycle. We cycle to the lunar calendar. But let me ask you this. So mm -hmm. you, you say you rub it, uh, uh, progesterone in. Uh, does that, this, this is what I, I you know, traditional doctors, because I've asked them about supplements and, and, and hormones and all this kind of stuff. They say everything from supplements just absolutely don't work because it'll never get in the bloodstream. Or they'll say things like, you know, let's say testosterone replacement uh, doesn't work because then your body will think it no longer needs to produce testosterone. So you'll quickly, you know, take a dive on your body producing testosterone naturally. Like what's, what's the story as, as far as well, you know? Well, with all due respect, mm -hmm. they're wrong. This is such a valuable service for all business owners, big businesses, small businesses, doesn't matter. I wish I had this in the many different businesses that I've started. Sometimes it seems like your business is humming, but then suddenly you don't understand it. You're starting to fall behind. You're not understanding what, where your costs are, where your revenues are, where, where your payments are. Teams are buried in all sorts of like BS work and you can't seem to close the books. So you need like one dashboard, one source of truth. I'm jealous of this business, NetSuite from Oracle, of course, NetSuite by Oracle. I wish I'd come up with this idea. It's, it's, it's a brilliant 
concept to have all your business intelligence on one dashboard. This is why you need to know these three numbers, 37,000, 25, and one. So 37,000, that's the number of businesses which have upgraded to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system, streamlining accounting, financial management, inventory, HR, and more. 25, NetSuite turns 25 this year. That's 25 years of helping businesses do more with less, close their books in days, not weeks, and drive down costs. One, because your business is one of a kind. So you get a customized solution for all of your key performance indicators, your KPIs, in one efficient system with one source of truth. Manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Everything you need to grow all in one place. So right now, Download NetSuite's popular KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance absolutely free at netsuite.com slash James. That's netsuite.com slash James to get your own KPI checklist. netsuite.com slash James. The future of learning is definitely online. Like it's such BS that you have to spend $200,000 or take $200,000 in loans and go to some fancy school when it's useless. It doesn't guarantee you a job. Most employers, including me, do not care about degrees or grades or anything like that. We want to care that you love what you're doing, that you know what you're doing, in some cases that you have experience or that you're willing to learn. But People in general love learning and are curious. Like the key to success is curiosity. And I think masterclass.com is the perfect model for online learning. I'm really happy they're, they're sponsoring uh, this episode. If you're going to give a gift, give the gift of learning. Masterclass makes a meaningful gift this season for you and anyone on your list because both of you can learn from the best to become your best from leadership to effective communication to cooking. Let me tell you some of the classes I've taken. I've taken comedy from Steve Martin. I mean, can you believe I can take a class from Steve Martin on comedy or Judd Apatow, my favorite comedy director. I could take an actual class from him on writing. Wolfgang Puck on cooking. Dan Brown on writing. Or Judy Bloom, who's been on this podcast, on writing. By the way, Wolfgang Puck also has been on this podcast. It's such a pleasure. I, I try to take classes all the time from masterclass.com. And whether you're watching Masterclass on TV or listening in audio mode in the app or on their site, the quality speaks for itself. It's like these Masterclass instructors are your own personal mentors that are going to help you reach the next level. How much would it cost to take one-on-one -on -one classes on comedy from Steve Martin or on chess from Gary Kasparov? You just wouldn't be able to do it. But it would, I mean, it would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. With a Masterclass annual membership, it's $10 a month. Membership started at $120 a year for unlimited access to one-on-one -on -one classes with all 180 plus masterclass instructors. So it's not just $120 for one instructor. You get all 180 plus masterclass instructors. Boost your confidence and find practical takeaways you can apply to your life and at work. And if you own a business or are a team leader, use Masterclass to empower and create future-ready employees and leaders. That's the real education in today's world. So. This holiday season, you can give one annual membership and get one free at masterclass.com slash JAS. JAS, of course, stands for the James Altucher Show. So right now you can get two memberships for the price of one at masterclass.com slash JAS. Masterclass.com slash JAS. Offer terms apply. You know, for instance, you men with your testosterone, and this is backed up by Dr. Abraham Morgenthaler in this book. He's on the faculty at Harvard. He's uh, their chief urologist. He called me, now it's been about four years. He said, I got something I think will interest you. I said, what? He goes, I just completed a small but um, very significant study. Men came into my office. It didn't matter how high their PSA was. It didn't, didn't matter if they had cancer or what stage cancer they had. He said, in every single case, when I gave them testosterone as the antidote, their, 
their uh, prostates return to normal size and the PSA went down. And the way he described it to me, and I'm not a doctor, that your prostate, (laughs) I love talking about, here's your prostate. And it's like a woman's you're breast. Like, you're like femsplaining to two men. <laughs> <laughs> it's just easier. Yeah, this is, this is all about you guys. Yeah. So here's your prostate. And um, it's like a woman's breast. And you have ducts in your prostate. And in those ducts is where testosterone makes food for the sperm. So when you're young and you're making a full complement of testosterone, guess what? Your prostate's nice and tight and small. But as you age and you start declining in testosterone production, your prostate enlarges looking for its most essential building block, which is testosterone. But usually by the time it gets to here, in today's medicine with doctors, with all due respect, who don't understand, they rip that prostate out. And now the guy is no longer the guy he was. And now he's on an expensive Lupron shot, which I think is three grand a shot, where as Dr. Morgenthaler in this book is saying, testosterone is the antidote. He has a beautiful story about a 90-year-old guy who came in and wanted tes- testosterone for this. And so wouldn't you rather try that first before you had your prostate ripped out and see if this worked? And so my whole thing with natural... Well, but should you wait until things are at that level or should you start earlier? No, no, no. Understand that testosterone is your friend. You know, my, my husband is 10 years older than I am. Uh, He doesn't absorb testosterone cream, so we give him a shot every Tuesday. He's got a little bit of, not much, just a little bit of fat right up above above his hip here, and I, you know, hold it together and stick the shot in. And um, what I like about, well, first of all, don't call us on Wednesday. <laughs> but what I like or the about yeah, or, so, so or, many or restrictions the, with or you. the full moon, yeah, right. I got a lot, I got a lot of parameters, but he works out with weights, and because he's on testosterone, he's buff. He's like solid. He's eighty three, and it's like he's built. I, 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 he's my act. I put him on Facebook Live. I do two Facebook Live shows a week, and I was selling uh, our organic um, sea salt sugar scrub. And so I laid him on the the uh, massage table in his camouflage underpants, which looked really good on him. And I was massaging his back to to exfoliate. But really what the women were noticing and saying is, wow, he's in good shape. And wow, his skin looks so smooth. And wow, he's very muscular. This is an 83-year-old guy who doesn't take drugs unless absolutely necessary, who uh, juices up on testosterone exactly in the in his exact deficiencies, according to lab work, once a week. He takes DHEA. And, and just supplements. The supplements. DHA. And that yeah. works. It gets absorbed into the... Yeah. He takes uh, cortisol, hydrocortisone in uh, capsule form. He takes thyroid, a grain and a half every day. This is all from lab HGH. work. Uh, well, then HDH. I interviewed Dr. Terry Hertog in this book. He's from Belgium. He's an interesting endocrinologist over there. And he's the reason that thyroid is legal in Europe and because it was illegal, natural thyroid. You could buy the drug thyroid, but you couldn't buy the natural. Okay. So he, he suggests in this book he, two things that I thought were very interested. Targeted, targeted peptide treatment, like what part of your body do you want like juice up in your body? What's not working at optimum? There, each section of your body has peptides that are specific you, to even it. Even your brain? Yeah, even the brain. And um, and also sex. There's a peptide shot for sex called PT, as in peptide, 141. That works on the the uh, brain, the part of the brain that um, uh, stimulates sexual sing- signals. I can't take it very much because I'm on full hormone replacement. So when I take it maybe once a month, it's almost too much for me. But how about for a female who is having trouble having any sexual feelings at all? How nice to be able to rev start that. But back to Alan and his muscles. Um, testosterone it feeds his brain, feeds his muscles, smooths out his skin, um, gives him vitality, energy, uh, and the rest of the hormones he takes. And for me, I'm like, I don't make any hormones. I, at 73, I don't make any. That's why 73 is usually old. I take uh, estrogen every day of the month, progesterone 15 days of the month, thyroid every day of the month, human growth hormone every day of the month, uh, cortisol replacement, um, did I say DHEA? Um, Do you take um, NAD plus boosters? 
yeah, I wanted to talk about NAD. I think NAD, you were saying, Dr. Dr. Richard Sinclair. No, it was... No, David, David Sinclair. Sinclair. David, David Sinclair, Sinclair at Harvard, yeah. Who said that NAD is the closest thing we found to the fountain of youth. And the yes, immortality, immortality yeah. molecule, he likes yeah. to call it. Yeah. It is. I take it in capsule form every morning and every night. Mm -hmm. um, but I have a friend right now who's on the verge of dying. Uh, I won't say his name. He's a famous rock and roller. He's real cognitive decline. And um, he, if he has a stroke, it's over for him. He's now doing heavy-duty NAD uh, six to eight hours a day IV for the next month. IV. IV. And I've heard about, the, he's the first one I've heard about doing this, but I thought, if I thought I'm that close to a stroke, even though six hours a day of IV, uh, it's no different than people who go chemo for hours. Or binge watch Game of Thrones. Uh, or or <laughs> Pablo Escobar. I, that one too. Yeah, I've watched all of them and El Chapo. Um, we're in, a, this is a new place that we're in and it's really exciting that we can take control of our body, that we can replace what we've lost in the aging process, including nutrients and minerals, and we can determine if we're absorbing our minerals. If you've had a lot of drugs in your life, pharmaceutical drugs, you're not absorbing minerals. You know that. Right. So, so you have to take them as supplements? Yeah, but you have to be able to absorb them. I write about something <laughs> called humic and fulvic. But I like also too, you mentioned a lot of your books and I think this educates, you know, the public too. And I like to tell my patients this is, I like a lot of type of supplements too in liquid or sublingual form because this way also you get yeah. it right into your system. Yeah. Because when you swallow things, like sometimes I have patients come in, they'll see a doctor and they run 50 supplements. And that's a little bit hard on the stomach. And a lot of people, they lose Gaggy. their stomach acid as they get older. See, that's the whole thing too, what Suzanne's pointing out too. We all, it's part of aging. Our hormones go down. Um, our ability to digest supplements, even our food goes down. So, so there are ways that we can do to enhance that. So, so and, and, and Suzanne, you, you mentioned so many different, you know, minerals and vitamins that are important. How do we kind of figure out how to balance out which ones to take and how do we, we do we take them in liquid, supplement, IV? And, and I guess with the blood test, we sort of determine what we're deficient in, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah. then how do you determine how to take them? Uh, taking 50 supplements a day is gaggy. Mm -hmm. I do because I'm on the far end and I, I, but if I only took one supplement, ask me one supplement, I would take a probiotic every morning and every night for the rest of my life. Yeah. Everybody's got something wrong with their gut. Everybody, everybody. If you've uh, ever you talk about the gut microbiome yeah. here and, that, and that's the, that's the recommendation. If you've ever had an antibiotic, anti takes away, you need probiotic. And, um, I was in the hospital 10 years ago and I was on IV antibiotics for six days, 24 hours a day for an infection I did not have. Just because you're in the hospital doesn't mean you're getting, you know, the best, uh, the best uh, advice. My gut was never the same again. I didn't know 10 years ago about probiotics. Why didn't the doctors know? They don't, it's in medical school, you're learning everything you know Dr. Mitchell, yes. is because you learned it outside 100%, of the box. 100%. Because they're not teaching doctors these basic things. Anti takes away, pro puts back. Yeah, why don't they teach you about probiotics? Because every woman I know knows to take probiotics. Yeah, I know. Men you don't know, seem to She makes a great point. But yeah. again, you see, that's again too where she took a lot of heat over the years where it had to come from, unfortunately, forces outside of conventional medicine to say, take a look at this. And something Suzanne said earlier too, I think it's so important, like in her books and that and when people read, I like when a patient comes to me and said, I've read all about this. That doesn't intimidate me. Mm -hmm. That's like, okay, we're going to have a good discussion now. You. And I'm going to now try to guide you from my experience of treating maybe a thousand patients who've been on antibiotics, we need to use a probiotic or rebalance your microbiome. So I think it's important too, this work that she's putting out there and that hopefully the public and patients find practitioners who are going to work with them. Because I think also to do it alone yourself, I mean, you're very bright and you've had access mm -hmm. to a lot of tremendous no, people. It's, scary. it's very tough. I, that's why this book will give you the confidence to right. ask the right questions. And, and you hit the whole spectrum of this book. Like I was just looking at some of my notes, like you, you know, you talk about stem cell therapy, uh, which, uh, but I also want to ask about, you mentioned uh, the vegan diet. And I thought this was an interesting quote. You don't, you, you've never heard of a single, uh, centenarian, you know, someone who lives over a hundred years old who was vegan or, or vegetarian? Well, three different scientists now have said to me, vegans don't live as long. And because meat 
has all the amino acids. That's right. right. And when you look iron. at someone who looks really good and the tightness of their skin, that's their amino acids. And it, Steve, are you, you listening? <laughs> uh, this is just a temporary phase he's going through. <laughs> you know, we, we, we villainized meat, but we, our bodies were designed for it. So it's just the quality of the meat, organic, right. grass-fed, grass Fed is the key is the key thing. There's one other thing that happens. I know you're going to another question, but I just wanted to say, uh, as we age, we lose um, hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes. Why do you care? Well, if you're not making sufficient hydrochloric acid in your stomach, you can't digest your food. So you can be eating the highest quality food available and you can end up malnourished. And then you're not making sufficient digestive enzymes to grind it all up. I had radiation when I had cancer 20 years ago, a decision I would not make today and I didn't want to make it then. I got talked into it. I'll never get talked into anything ever again because um, I, they, they immediately after you have radiation and then you have all these terrible re reflux and terrible stomach issues and everything and then, then they give you Nexium or Prevacid or something like that and then you feel terrible because you're on these drugs. It turns out that radiation depletes your body's ability to make hydrochloric acid for life. Mm -hmm. That's an important thing to I say to someone. I didn't even someone. know that. I didn't yeah, even know that. that you know, I know, you know, yeah, because I, I know it goes down with people. I, know, I see so many patients, as you mentioned, some of your books with candida yeast overgrowth because they've been on prolonged courses of antibiotics or acid blocks. I mean, again, every every commercial you watch is Nexium, Protonix, right. I mean, nothing, you know, Look and how many commercials there are oh that shows boy. you how prevalent this it is. It is. People, and but, now it's over the counter. Yeah. So nobody even, you, know, you could just do it on your own yeah. forever. And hydrochloric acid is just something that diminishes with aging. Yeah. It's another one of the things that declines. You got to put back in. Mm -hmm. So because I've had radiation, every meal I eat, I take six capsules of hydrochloric acid. That's a lot, but I have, I make none. I make none. Mm -hmm. So here's what, look at look at what I do to remain uh, vital and juicy and all the things that I want to be. I completely replace all the hormones that I don't make anymore, all of them. I completely replace the hydrochloric acid my stomach doesn't make. I completely replace the digestive enzymes that my body doesn't make. I take uh, fish oil. I take... Um, of, um, uh, I take so many, so many things. I'm I'm looking at my cabinet. What's right? the NAD booster you take? Um, I life extension NAD booster. I I really enjoyed writing about that. The other thing is senolytics, and senolytics, um, which I had never heard of before. I wrote this book. As we get older, our cells fill with cellular debris. That's why we. That ages us. It makes us sluggish. It makes us slow down. The cells aren't working. You're 40 trillion cells, so your cells aren't working at optimum. Senolytic activator, which is about $8 a month, and you take it once a week, cleans out cellul cellular debris. If you take senolytic activator, and I tell you where to get it in the book, I don't sell it. I wish I did. And NAD, which repairs DNA breaks. Here you have the thing that what we are, which is cells, starting to rejuvenate and heal and come back to optimal life. And that's going to give you longer life, quality of life and extended life. Wow. So I have to say, so people and, and Al, can you, you No, it's me. Steve's fault. It's Steve's fault. It's, okay. Trust okay. me, it's Steve's fault. Unless mm -hmm. Alan's the same as Steve, it's they're Steve's the same, fault. Are they the same? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so Suzanne, you're killing me because I got to catch a train oh. and I want to talk to them for the next two hours with uh, you. I, let's I, do it I, again. But yeah, I, I, we have to do it again I think, because I see, I think this is re really the way through one really important for people to know that there's another way, yes. not that you have to do it this way, but that they're only convinced mm. there's one way, the, right. the allopathic way that we've all been doing. And we're over here going, or this, mm -hmm. and you might look into it and you might feel better. Maybe you won't. I do. I, I like the way I'm aging. I thought when I was 73, I'd be old. I'm not old. I'm no, not old. You and I see Alan here. Who Very like, vibrant. You guys are like <laughs> yeah. 30 year olds and uh, uh, you have more energy than me. I'm the one, uh, I fall asleep. I'm not trying to be young. I don't care about that. I want my insides to be young and that manifests on the outside. And I, I love that I've got a whole other chapter 
Yeah. And probably more after that. And and I want women and men to know it ain't over. And, and again, this book contains so much information, not only from your own experiences, but from these great interviews you do with with innumerable doctors. We can't yeah. count. I know. I never doctors. counted them. We, we haven't counted <laughs> them. But you talk about everything from you know, there's, there's chapters about testosterone and the hormone system. The, the, you talk about toxicity and how the environments we're in are often toxic and how to, what to do about that. You talk about the gut, you talk about uh, NAD boosters you t- and senolytics and telomeres, and we didn't get to cannabis and other energy medicines, but mm. fortunately people could buy your book, A New Way to Age, and get all this. And I'm going to hold you to it that at some point we're going to do mm-hmm. a part two of this because I've, Wait, got, could we? I've got selfishly 50 or 60 more questions to ask. So, could we? Could we yes. do another one? I'd really do you like promise? that. It's up to you. Yeah. No. All right. Good. I'm sorry. I have to okay. train I'm coming in back half hour. in the spring or we could always do this by phone. Like, I'd like to. Yeah. I'd like to do it in person. So when you're, okay. when you're back in All a right. few months, uh, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll do it. And, All um, right. thank you so much. I've been obviously a fan for a long time and now I'm a, a fan <laughs> from this book as well. Thank uh, you. I'm, I'm super inspired and, and I encourage people to read this. We didn't get to everything I wanted. We will get to it. <laughs> but let's at least pay attention to what you said here and, and read the book. And thank you once again for, thank you. for coming on the podcast. Thank you. And great hair. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you too. <laughs> Thanks. How nice. <laughs> I'm sorry I have to go. No, again, no, go. Get out of here. Diving deep into your passions has never been easier. Thanks to Amazon Prime. You get all-in-one access to the things you need so you can get more out of the things you love. With a range of services including Prime Video, Amazon Music, and Prime Fast free shipping. Amazon Prime is like your personal mission control for all the things that inspire. From shopping and streaming to saving, it's on Prime. Visit Amazon.com slash Prime to get more out of whatever you're into. It's on Prime. Hey, Brad, you know how Nationwide is more than an insurance company? Yeah, they're one of America's largest financial services companies. We get that in a song like Business Life Retirement. Or Nationwide's there to protect. I'm kind of the jingle guy. Not sure I agree with that. I'm not sure I like your hat. Well, it would never fit on you. Products issued by Nationwide Life Insurance Company or Nationwide Life and Annuity Insurance Company. The general distributor for variable products is Nationwide Investment Services Corporation, member FINRA, Columbus, Ohio.